Hey guys, and uh, welcome to this screencast. My name is Pontus Rufold, and uh, I, as many of you guys watching this video, I work as a composer, making music for primarily movie trailers and video games. And uh, as all of you know, it's more important than ever to be able to make great sounding mockups really, really fast. And for that to be possible, we need great tools and great sample libraries. And so it is my great pleasure today to get to demonstrate a wonderful new sample library by the name Storm Choir. It is uh, being distributed by a new sampling company by the name Stretzo Sampling, and it is produced by the very talented Jasper Blanc and Oliver Codd. Now, obviously the most important part of any sample library is how it sounds. So, what I'm going to be doing first is talk a little bit about the sound of this library. But basically what I'm going to be doing today is that I think the best way to demonstrate a sample library is to both sh just play it as it is, expose, no effects, no configuration, take you through the whole library, and but also to show you the library in the context of a piece. And I wrote a demo piece, uh, with, I've had my hands on this library for a little while, and I wrote a demo piece that some of you might have heard called Fate Fulfilled. And so I'll be basically be showing what I did in that piece and uh, try to give you a composer's perspective on this sample library. So first of all, the sound. Now, I think all of us composers are always searching for samples that have a, that air to it, you know, that depth to it. But we also want to maintain a certain clarity while having that ambience. And I've found throughout the years that it is very, very few commercial, commercially available sample libraries that achieve that perfect middle ground of having a nice ambience and depth while maintaining the clarity. It's often at the expense of clarity and sound that we get the ambience. Now, that's why I was so surprised and happy when I opened Storm Choir for the, for the first time because they've, they've nailed that perfect middle ground where you both have the clarity and the depth of sound. Now, enough talking about the sound of the library. Just to start things off, I'm going to play you my finished demo piece. And you who, who have heard it before, maybe, uh, you can skip ahead about a minute and a half into the video. But for you who haven't heard it, here is my demo piece. So that was my demo piece, Fate Fulfilled. And here you have my template. And as you can see, there are quite a few different sample libraries in this template. And something else you're probably wondering is, how well does Storm Choir mix with current sample libraries on the market? And having written a piece now, I can say that I did absolutely nothing to make it fit. It was really a plug and play situation, which is obviously very, very convenient. And as you also can see, there are two main articulations. 
there are the Mercado patches and the Staccato patches. Now when we usually think about Mercado and Staccato patches, we kind of just imagine these and usually all it is is these one-off hits uh, triggered at different dynamic levels depending on your velocity. Now that doesn't do these patches justice because they have very clever time machine programming and contact that allows you to play not only short notes and long notes but everything in between. So even if you're using the Marcado patch you can do very short phrasings. So you can really create flowing passages which otherwise with other sample libraries can be very very hard. So let's take a look now at the interface of the Storm Choir. And so this is what the interface looks like. You can see there are a number of buttons and controls, but in the middle you have the different syllables that they sing. As you can see there are five different syllables. You can program these via key switch if you wish to do so. Uh, and you can change where the key switches are by double clicking here. Now, however, I greatly encourage you to turn on the sequence chant button, which creates sequences of these syllables that work well together. That way you don't have to sit down and try to figure out which syllables work well in sequence with each other. So just turn on the button and you're ready to go. Now, what the stacking button does is that it basically creates an overdub, a second dub, to make the sound of the patch even bigger than it already is. Uh, the Titan button turns on the time machine algorithm, the release button turns on and off the release samples, and if you get tired of the syllables you can turn on the sample offset button which shaves off, uh, depending on how you configure it, shaves off the starts of these syllables. Now let's just listen to it, uh, the women marcado with, this, with the stacking button and Titan button off. now with the stacking button on. Much thicker sound. And if you turn on the Titan button, you turn on the time machine algorithm. And this allows you to play much more flex, uh, like more, much more flexible uh, passages, both short and uh, long phrasings. So let's listen to that. I mean see how flexible, look at how flexible that was. I was able to play really short notes and long notes. That's what I meant earlier by having everything in between, in between a short and a long. And so I greatly encourage you to use these time machine patches and explore that because the possibilities are just amazing. Now having talked a little bit about these buttons, let's look to the right. There are the mic positions. And as you can see there are four different mic positions. We have the close mics, decatry mics, the outrigger mics, and the balcony mics. Now you can solo individual mic positions or mute individual mic positions or you can completely unload them from your memory footprint. Now that's really useful if you're strapped on resources as well and still want to use the time machine patches because you can definitely use one or two mic positions and still get a great sound. So if I just have the Deca tree for example you can see that I greatly reduce the memory footprint. So that's very useful. And actually, let's listen to just all of the individual mic position. A lot of the frequency spectrum that gives you that clarity is in the close mics. Now I like to have it a little bit more ambient, so I usually turn down the close mics a little bit. But that's obviously up to you. Now let's listen to the Deca tree. the outriggers. Uh, 
and the balcony mics. As you see, that provides a lot of flexibility in terms of mixing as well. Now you've heard plenty of the women marcados, so let's get back to my piece and explore the men sections and the staccato patches. And so first of all, I should mention that if you want a slightly, well, if you want slightly less clarity and more, a more soft sound, you can simply move your mod wheel and there's, you'll get a low pass filter. Can work really well in certain situations. Now let's listen to what the men marcado sounds like. Great deep sound. And if you're if you're an Elder Scrolls fan like me, you've probably played Skyrim. And uh, the main theme of that game had this wonderful huge men's choir doing this viking-like chant and you can get really close to that sound with a with a men's section in this library just awesome and speaking of that uh, i just love the women marcado because it, it has such a huge wonderful sound and you can get really close to what the choir sounds like in the return of the king uh, during the battle of minas tirith so just listen to this Awesome, isn't that? I think it's just spectacular. Now we've explored the marcados quite extensively, so let's just listen to the staccato a little bit. Here's the women's staccato. And as you notice, when I, it's it's not only this one-off, really tight, short hit. If I hold down my key slightly, you get a slightly extended phrase. So, and that's what I mean, meant earlier too, with um, that you get everything in between thanks to the time machine algorithms, uh, making these kind of passages really easy to make. It's just wonderful. So let's listen to the men staccato. Very cool. I mean, you can make these really, really epic sounding chants with that. Now, what is it like to write a piece with this library? Well, for me, I can honestly say that it was a plug and play situation. I didn't feel like I had to figure out how to use this library with my other libraries or in the context of a piece. And in terms of media editing, I mean, it was pretty much non-existent. I didn't really have to do much. All I have here is a little MIDI CC1 editing because I wanted a little bit of a softer tone in the beginning. And uh, so that brings in the low pass filter. And uh, as you can see, I'm able to write very thickly too, very densely, since it's a chamber size choir. While, and you don't lose clarity and you don't get too much ambience since it's that, it, that perfect middle ground in terms of sound. Let's just listen actually a little bit to to it in the context of the, of the piece while looking at the MIDI. I should add too that this is without any added reverb whatsoever and in terms of mixing you really just need to add a tad tad bit of reverb and you're pretty much good to go in terms of Storm Choir. And in terms of other MIDI editing all I really did was adjust some of the uh, afterwards adjusting some of the starting points of some of the MIDI otherwise I did nothing. And that, the same goes for the staccato. 
able to write very densely and it works. So let's listen to that a little bit. Hopefully this has given you a bit of an overview uh, of the library and from a composer perspective uh, in terms of uh, writing a piece and just my thoughts about using it and what it's like and what the sound is like. I uh, highly recommend this library. I think it has a very very affordable great price too and uh, yeah I hope you'll all get it and I'm really looking forward to hearing what everyone makes with this library because I mean I've only I feel like I've only scratched the surface in terms of what kind of music I can make with uh, with this choir and uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing what everyone does with it and uh, thank you for watching this video on this overlook my name is Pont Srufel and I hope you'll have a great day <laughs>